Going through airport security is already enough of a hassle. Why wear things that make it harder? Or worse, make security mad at you? It can possibly be fun to get dressed up for your flight, but there's nothing wrong with dressing comfortably for the airport either. After all, the whole ordeal can be a big source of anxiety for many travelers, so why not at least be comfortable? Just a word of caution, though. Try to avoid excessively baggy or loose clothing. It might hold you up in the security line. Former TSA agent Kimberly Pruitt explained to Insider that TSA agents are required to inspect travelers wearing baggy clothing to make sure that they aren't smuggling dangerous or banned objects. And it isn't just baggy sweaters and oversized pants that are red flags. Maxi skirts and large dresses might lead to extra inspections and a pat-down, too. Consider wearing a pair of leggings or bike shorts under your skirt or dress so you can quickly pull up the outfit to show them you've got nothing to hide. Perhaps one of the most consistently annoying things about airport security in the U.S. is the requirement that travelers remove their shoes. And unfortunately, there's no getting around it if you haven't paid for TSA pre-check. The practice of shoe inspection began after a British man named Richard Reed tried to detonate a shoe bomb on a transatlantic flight in an attempted terror attack in December 2001. The TSA recommends that travelers do not wear shoes that lace up excessively or have complex buckles or zippers that make taking them off and putting them back on again a pain for all involved. So if you choose to wear some knee-high lace-up shoes, just know you're going to be holding up your fellow travelers. Sir, I strongly suggest you remove your boots. What do you strongly suggest? That's right. You just can't just leave your outerwear on as you go through airport security. This is because coats and jackets have all kinds of pockets and places to hide or forget things. They are also more likely to have metal accents on them, such as belts or zippers. So while it can be annoying to take off your coat and stand in line for the scanners as you freeze your butt off in the cold airport, you have to do it. Otherwise, you're really going to regret being told to go back and put your jacket in a tray before you can come through. At the risk of sounding like nagging parents, this is why it's important to layer up. Wear a long sleeve shirt underneath your jacket or overcoat if you're worried about staying warm while you wait. This way, you can stay both comfortable and prepared. The airport doesn't have any rules against adding some flashy fun to your ensemble with a stylish accessory or two. That said, the TSA has a couple good reasons why you should probably avoid a particular accessory choice. Metal jewelry. Walking through the metal detector while wearing tons of metal jewelry is bound to set off the alarms, which will add extra time to the process for them, you, and everyone behind you in line. Can't you read? The sign says put all metal objects in a container. Take your ass on. Get on back there. Though they might be an essential part of your outfit, you're definitely going to be wishing you had packed them in your bag as you strip off your jewelry and go back to place them in a bin. If you have very valuable or sentimental jewelry, this would probably make you a little anxious, so avoid this by putting these items in your carry-on. You can always take them out after you pass through security. Former TSA agent Jasmine Washington told the Huffington Post that clothing covered in rhinestones, sequins, and other sparkly accents is a fashion choice to avoid when going through the airport security line. While many travelers may want that touch of sparkle in their outfits, especially if they're headed out for a fun weekend with friends, the intricate embellishments can actually set off the sensitive scanners. This can lead to additional security screenings with the wand and even pat-downs. Of course, that will slow down the security process. This could even prevent you from getting to your gate on time. So while it's not as fun, choose clothing that isn't so bedazzled and leave your jewel-encrusted clothes in your luggage. Maybe opt for clothing that has bright colors if you're wanting to wear something fun and flashy, or if you absolutely can't avoid the sparkle, consider wearing bedazzled shoes, since these will go through the scanner anyway. For every traveler who wears a belt, there's a TSA agent keeping an eye out to remind them to take it off. The metal buckle will inevitably set off the metal detectors. Yes, there are belts that don't have any metal parts, and while you're free to wear one of those, airport security personnel understandably don't have the time or patience to verify what kind of material your belt is made of, and will likely ask you to take it off anyway. Belt 2. Uh, ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry, I'd rather Fine. not. Fine, opt out! If you can get through with your pants still on, it may be best to just leave the belt off altogether. Not only is this yet another piece of clothing you have to take off and put on again, but the less you have to disrobe, the faster things will go for everyone. If you have to wear business attire for your travel, consider finding a pair of pants with an elastic or comfortable waistband that still looks tailored. Or you could shell out for TSA PreCheck, where there's no requirement to remove your belt. 
The First Amendment guarantees Americans the right to wear t-shirts that say pretty much anything, even something offensive. But there are limits to free speech, and one place where you may face some consequences for expressing yourself through your attire is the airport. The TSA's job, first and foremost, is to protect travelers from any perceived threat. While most people who are actually a threat to others' safety probably won't announce their intentions on their t-shirts, if your clothing implies that you have weapons on you or you intend to do harm, this will raise the suspicions of security personnel. The same goes for accessories that resemble weapons in some way. What could happen? If you're not actually carrying a weapon, probably just an additional screening, and some accessories could be confiscated. Again, you would be well within your rights to go with these clothing choices, but it'll be more of a hassle for everyone involved, so why risk it? Almost any headwear you choose to wear to the airport should probably come off when you go through security. It just makes sense, since these items could have bits of metal on them or inside them that could set off metal detectors. Not only that, but TSA agents at security will probably ask you to take your hat off anyway, since you could potentially conceal dangerous or prohibited items under it. Not everyone has to adhere to these rules, though. The TSA makes some exceptions for travelers who choose to wear headwear for personal or religious reasons. Even then, you may have to go through additional screening with a wand, however. If you don't clear this screening, you might even be asked to go to a private room to remove the headwear. Many people want to look their best when flying, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Not everyone can muster up that amount of effort for a red-eye flight, but we have an appreciation for those who can. While a nice button-down and a pair of tailored trousers could be all it takes to pull off an effortlessly elegant look for the airport, travelers may want to caution against crafting complicated hairstyles before takeoff. According to the TSA, if you put together an elaborate updo using a bunch of bobby pins, all those little bits of metal are going to set off alarms in the metal detectors, and you may require a secondary screening as a result. Bows, hair clips, wraps, clip and extensions, and even wigs can have the same effect, which will also prompt an inspection of your hair. This might sound preposterous, but it does indeed happen. Last year they checked for explosives in my wig. <laughs> when it comes to choosing your outfit for your flight, metal anywhere on your person is a big no-no. That includes buckles and hooks on your clothing. It's not that the TSA thinks you're going to somehow hurt someone with a top that has buckles on it, but it's going to set off the metal detectors and slow everything down. You definitely don't want to get tapped for additional screenings because of your clothing choices. It's worth noting that this includes your undergarments, too. So instead of choosing to wear your extra special underwear with metal decorations on them, put them in your checked luggage and wear them another day. These kinds of garments could probably go in your carry-on unnoticed, too. But you might get some questions about them if the agents can't identify what they're looking at. It's already pretty anxiety-inducing to bring your baby on a flight with you, so why add more stress to the situation by holding up the security line? If you plan to carry your child through security in a baby carrier, make sure you've got one that can go through the scanners without setting off alarms. If you use a soft-body carrier that does not have any metal rings or buckles on it, you won't have to take the carrier off when going through security, and the baby can stay with you the whole time. If you are using a framed carrier, this will have to be removed and placed in the x-ray machine to be scanned. This is definitely not optimal for you or your child, and would be especially dreadful if you had to wake your little one up from a cozy nap. Traveling with any kind of medical device is a pain, particularly when you have to get that thing through airport security. You never know if the TSA agents you'll be encountering that day will raise questions about your medically necessary devices. To avoid finding yourself in this kind of predicament, especially if you need to wear a brace, prosthetic, or other wearable device, make sure to get a note from your doctor that clearly states that you need it. If you can remove the device, do so and allow TSA to inspect it or send it through the x-ray machine, if possible. However, if you can't or don't want to remove your wearable, don't feel obligated to. While you should definitely let the TSA agents know that you have a device on your body so that they can inspect it, you aren't required to take it off. 